Hello and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian, and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back, Soul Nation. Thanks for coming and checking out a Final Fantasy video, of which we're doing a deep dive into my Scholar Controller Guide. This is where I show you my macros, my settings, my filters, and all of my skills and how I've got them laid out. But I do so only in a way of making recommendations to help ease you into the world of the Scholar and the Controller within the universe of Final Fantasy XIV. If after this video, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Hit us up on Discord if you're looking for a team or a group to play. Now, I personally love the Scholar. There's a lot to love about this job. Now, I usually level the Arcanist first because that is how you get the Scholar and the Summoner, a Healer and a Caster. And unless you know something changes with 6.0, pretty much that's gonna be how it is. So Scholar makes an excellent addition to your lineup, especially if you're enjoying the healing role. So that brings me to now my settings, my setup, pretty much everything we want to cover in this guide. If you're looking to fast track, jump to any particular spot in the guide itself, check the playhead or the description for the different time codes. But let's go ahead and jump into system and character configuration. Most of all your settings are here under hotbar settings. I'm gonna first go into control settings and I'm gonna go into filters. Namely because while I'm playing the game, as a controller player, I can target anybody in my party by using the up and down keys on the D-pad where left and right ends up being filtered for anything else like alliance members or enemies. Same thing over here when my weapon is drawn, I just wanna have it focused in on weapon, uh, weaponies, weapons in this case. So you'll notice that obviously you have two different targeting modes and you also have filter customization down here at the bottom to have even more power and control over that. You can see here enable by pressing and holding down L bumper and either one of the face buttons. In my case on an Xbox controller, X, Y, A, and B, or you know, cross, triangle, square, circle, things like that, that's all implied and set up that way. So, but just kind of focus in here. So if I have my weapon out, now I will only target enemies. And if I have my weapon up, I will only target uh, pretty much everything else under my custom filter. And you can see actually which filter I'm using listed right here. So weapon out, boom, enemies, weapon up, custom. Going back into settings and character configuration and under hop bar settings, under display, I've got my display hotbar numbers turned off. If I turn that on, you'll see some floating numbers. I personally find this a little bit distracting, don't prefer it. I also have hide unassigned slots turned on. And if I turn that off, you see all these gray floating bars and that's not necessarily pretty. So I go ahead and turn that off as well. Under sharing, and this is really where it gets important. If it's checked, that means any job, any class, no matter what, are gonna have those skills. Whatever you set to that hotbar is shared. Perfect for limit break, mount, sprint things like that, and I'll show you that here in just a little bit. Anything that's not checked is job specific, so white mage, scholar, those are all gonna be different, and thus you wanna have them set here as non-shared. Under cross, I have always display cross hotbar. I turned off cross hotbar help, but you can turn this on, uh, or this is, if you already have it on, you can turn it off if you want, but ultimately, as you learn the skills and, and know what they do, you, this is just additional information that can keep your UI clean. Now, down here at the bottom, I used hold mode. You can do toggle or mixed, and the difference is, is that hold, you, you know, hold down the trigger. Toggle means you press it like a button and it's gonna be on until you press it again. Mixed is a blend where you can do a hold or a toggle, but you're gonna lose some features like the expanded cross hop bar, which is left trigger, right trigger, right trigger, left trigger, or double tapping with the W cross hop bar. So I recommend hold, but if you're struggling with how it's comfortable for you, find what works for you, because that's honestly gonna be the best way you're gonna enjoy it. Now I have always display cross hop bar, excuse me, the double cross hop bar. I have return to cross hop bar after W cross hop bar input, just to kind of give you an anxiety, uh, you know, an anxiety <laughs> example, recitation, boom, now I'm ready to go. And then I can pop that on, you know, so this way it allows me to kind of pick a thing and then it immediately puts me back into my main hop bar. You can turn this off and I actually have done that with Ninja. So just note that you have some control there. Now you can also position your hotbar separately or you can have it set up to the default. It's really up to you. You can see I only have slightly moved mine. It honestly doesn't make that big of a difference to me, but it might to you if you want a little bit more control and customization. Now under the custom tab, this is where you set the hotbars that they're set. Notice that if I grab, you know, chain stratagem and try to drag it and drop it on here, it's not going to work. I cannot interact with these like as in a drag and a drop like, you, like I could with this. Uh, with my main cross hop bar. These are like little shortcut windows and you can see where they're set. In this case, hop bar three left and right for my W cross hop bar. So if I go to three in this case, I can actually move things around and you'll notice they reflect in real time right here. This is how they're set and they're managed. Now, whatever hop bar you choose, it's up to you. Mine's set to three left and three right and that's how I've got that managed. 
Under my expanded, I've got my LT plus RT is my cross hop R2 left. So you'll see that listed right here. If I hold LT and RT, you'll see that they're the exact same thing. And then if I do uh, right trigger, then left trigger, then I've got cross hop R7. And this ties back into my sharing conversation. Seven is shared. This is where you're gonna see my mounts, my minion, you know, if I wanted them, my limit break, couple targeting macros, sprint, and my wanderous tails. Whatever you need across all jobs, that's where that's gonna kinda of come into play. Also down here at the bottom, I have set selection, enable customization when my weapon is sheathed, one, seven, and eight, so shared uh, seven and eight, and in this case, one is just my default. And then I also have enable customization when my weapon is drawn and it's locked to number one. So if I show you guys what that looks like, this is what it looks like. So weapon not out, pressing R1 you know, one or R bumper, I can see that I can filter in this case between my pet hot bar and my own. My own. So if I hold down like this, let's say, let me go ahead and just actually dismiss my fairy. And with my fairy dismissed, if I press right bumper, I go to seven and I go to eight and then back to one. If my weapon is out, just pressing R bumper is only going to keep me locked on set one. So I don't end up running into a situation where I need to do something different. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that's how you can kind of filter this, how you can keep this balanced and keep that approach going. So you don't end up finding yourself on hop bar four or three, et cetera. So just kind of play around with that. It makes whatever the, is the most comfortable for you when playing this game. Now, if we go into my HUD layout, now from here, if we go into my HUD layout, I can easily set up a couple different roles. So if you have healers, if you have tanks, if you like to play a couple different roles in the game itself, I recommend you check out one, two, and three, and four to kind of set up different hot bars, different layouts, so that whatever makes the most sense for you in this case. Now under three, this is what I use just generally across the board. I don't make too many different changes, but to highlight it, I've got my hot bar three here, my cross hot bar and W cross hot bars. Uh, I have my Aetherflow Fairy Gauge uh, listed right here. You can control the setting and the display of any of these by clicking on their little setting and you can either say it to simple or to <laughs> uh, non-simple mode. So you can control the different layouts if you wanna have a simple mode, if you wanna have it a little more complex. Same thing kinda goes with the size, shape, and everything. The reason I go with hotbar three here, and this is again just to communicate cooldowns to me, I'm not actively clicking on any of these skills ever. Uh, they're just to tell me when things are off cooldown that, I, that it, I feel are important for me to know. You can set these any way you want, but the reason I go with three is that it doesn't have little numbers under the skill names. So it's just, again, a very clean approach. Over here on the left-hand side, I've got my party list, target bar up here at the top, uh, my own parameters, and I have my status and feeblements and uh, you know effect enhancements here. I have them split out. So if I like click on this window, click on settings, if you want to position them on their own, you can split elements into three groups and then you can kind of say, hey, here you go, and you can focus on the justification, the size, and more. They really give a lot of control over how you got it laid out. And then up here at the top, literally it's food buffs, it's my free company buff, like all of that, like all that's managed that way so you have a lot of control over your UI in this case. Now go ahead and it's time that we go ahead and dive into my different skills and how I've got those you know, specifically laid out. It's important for me, especially because I play White Mage, Astrologian, like all the healers, that I put skills that act the same way or similar uh, in the same spot. That way, especially all your cross roll, so I don't have to think. It becomes naturally uh, a part of my muscle memory. So we'll go over that. You'll notice if you watch my White Mage guide, if you watch my Astrologian guide, you'll notice some of these positions are the same and similar across all the guides because that just makes it easier on me. Up here at the top, for my uh, global cooldowns, or at least for my cooldowns uh, information, I need to come up with a cool name for them. I've got Stra Chain Stratagem. This is going to increase the rate at which targets actually take critical hits by 10%. This is fantastic. It's a two minute rotation. It's fantastic to pop this on bosses every an opportunity you can. If you can align this up with your other DPSs, you can end up having just a big, massive burst phase. So highly recommended it. I love that uh, scholars have that ability. Then I've got Summon Seraph. This is a part of the level 80 ability for Scholar, so note that you can set all of these abilities before you actually get them, so you can use this while leveling up. However, uh, you know, this is just really exciting. I hope you enjoy that. I have Aether Pack, that's the level 70 ability. This allows me to focus my, uh, you know, fairy on one specific target. This is great because especially when I'm going into my own personal damage phase, to be able to lock my fairy onto a target, keep them up, keep them healed, makes it easy and takes a lot of pressure off of me. And then I've got Rescue, another two minute re you know, cooldown. This is allowing me to pull enemy, or not enemies, <laughs> my friends, my frenemies, uh, out of bad, you know, or into bad. It really depends on if they're a friend of me or not in this case. But I've got Rescue there listed. Now over here on the double cross up our left, 
I've got Surecast. This is going to nullify any kind of interruption, uh, drawback, draw in effects, things like that. It's going to last six seconds. This is a caster's best friend, especially when there's certain content that's going to knock you around. Helps you not get knocked around. You can still continue your casting. Repose, this is going to afflict your target with sleep. It's going to last for 30 seconds. It's going to cancel your auto attack, and if you hit them, they're going to wake them up. So not a lot of people use Repose, but it's still there for you to enjoy. Then you've got Lucid Dreaming. This is going to gradually restore your own MP. Your MP is going to restore on its own, and especially with a Scholar, if you're managing this with Aetherflow, you should really be fine with MP. However, it's on a minute cooldown. Honestly, I would just say every minute, turn this on. Just make it a part of your rotation, and you'll always have MP to spare. And we already covered Chain Stratagem right there. Now on the left hand side, I've got Biosis, Energy Drain, Art of War, and Broil 3. Now Biosis is a single, you know, single target dot attack. It's also insta-cast, which means I can move and put these on any target on the go. It's gonna last 30 seconds, so it can last quite a long time. Broil 3 is an upgraded spell. So if you go into your actions and traits for the Scholar, you're gonna see a lot of different spells. Ruin actually upgrades into, into Broil, and this is done via a trait, so you can kind of see Broil Mastery. So essentially you can set Ruin, and that's really where this is being set. Uh, Biosis is essentially your you know, bio, which is gonna be the evolution of that spell as it evolves. Art of War is fantastic. I love this. It's got an AOE insta-cast ability. This is where I like to run in. Like again, like I'm saying, Aether Pack, the tank, run in, group of adds, AOE. Be sure to make sure you pop on uh, your Sacred Soil, which is listed here. For you guys who don't know, at first it just, you know, reduces damage by 10%. Awesome. Great. However, later it gets upgraded in an actually a region with a cure potency of 100. And that's incredible. So a 15 second region that, that you can apply on the ground. So this is fantastic as a scholar, highly recommended. Anyway, and then I also have energy drain. This allows you to use one of your Aether, you know, um, Aether, Aether flow, geez, uh, you know, uh, points. And that's also additional damage, especially if you find yourself where, you know, Aether flow itself is off the cooldown and you can reapply it. This is a great way to kind of drain that out and get yourself a little bit of damage and a little MP back as well. So note that this is kind of my circle of damage, my circle of pain really just depends on what I need. Then over here on the left-hand side, I've got my fairy stuff. I got Fey Blessing. I've got Whispering Dawn, Fey Illumination, and Consultation. Uh, and this is a part of the Seraph when he is summoned, or she is summoned. Uh, Fey Blessing, it orders the fairy to execute Fey Blessing. This basically restores HP to all nearby party members and with a 350 point. So this is an AoE. It's going to cost you 10 of your fairy gauge. Then you have Whispering Dawn. This is basically like a regen applied to the entire party with a cure potency of 120 and it's going to last 21 seconds. You know, marrying this with Sacred Soil is going, I mean, you're just going to have so much regen going out on your team. Fey Illumination is going to order your fairy, uh, your par you know, your fairy to actually execute it. Um, if Seraph is summoned, it's going to use Seraphic Illumination. And we'll actually go over all those abilities here in just a second. And then, for some reason, I zoomed in. And then, like I said, Consultation uh, has a two-stack to it. And this is going to essentially have that Cure Potency, uh, you know, just massive uh, Cure Potency of 300 to an area of effect uh, to your party members as well. So, anyway, there's more to cover, especially when it comes down to the Fairy. So, we'll cover that here in a second. Now, on the right-hand side, I've got Physic. This is your kind of your main Cure, thinking Cure 1 if you're a White Mage. Uh, this has got a cure potency of 400 and it's got an MP cost of 400. So it's kind of like a one for one cure potency to, uh, you know, MP cost in this case. Then you have Adloquium. This is a big <laughs> cost, like a thousand points versus 400. This has got a cure potency of 300, but it's also going to put Galvanize on the target, nullifying damaging equal 125 of the amount of HP restored. When your critical HP is restored, it also ga uh, grants Catalyze, which is nullifying damage equaling 125% of the amount of HP also restored. This is a like basically doubling your like a shield. So if you pop that, if you get that like that crit, <laughs> you're going to end up having a massive shield on them. You can guarantee a crit with recitation, by the way, just as a pro tip if you are looking for it. Anyway, um, I've got Indomitability. This is a, another AOE uh, healing. This is going to cost uh, a point of, of your Aether Flow. Here, then I've got Sacred Soil for ground targeting. Uh, deployment Tactics, this is going to extend that Galvanize effect, cast on self or anybody, kind of in a, re uh, in a region. It's got a two minute cooldown, but think about it if you're able to cast, uh, you know, Ad Loquium, then you can be able to put de Deployment Tactics on them. You're going to shield everybody in the party with that bigger shield, as opposed to Sucker, 
which in this case is only going to have a smaller shield associated with it, uh, especially it doesn't because Shucker doesn't have that hundred and uh, you know <laughs> that doesn't have that doubling effect that uh, Loquium has, but it does have a cure potency of 180. So again, higher cure potency of 300, a little bit less because it's AOE. This still applies a shield to the group, but at Loquium and deployment tactics, this is going to be a little bit of a stronger shield. And then Aether Flow, this is important to keep up every minute. The only downside about Aether Flow in, uh, in Shadowbringers is it requires you to be in combat, so you can't refresh this even when you're out of combat. So uh, as, as fast as you can, try to get into combat, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Over here on the W cross hop bar right, I've got Emergency Tactics, Recitation, one of my favorite abilities in the game, uh, especially because Recitation is every 90 seconds. It basically ensures that you can actually cast either Eloquium, Sucker, Indomitability, or Exotation without consuming any resources. So even Exotation, which costs an Aether Flow gauge of one, you can actually cast for free. So even if you're out, you can use that on there as well. Uh, Exotation is great. It's got a cure potency of 800. However, this is kind of more tactical in its way where basically it triggers if your HP falls below 50%. So if that does happen, boom, 800 cure potency immediately. Now this duration is going to last for 45 seconds. So it either will trigger at the 45 second mark or if their HP falls below 50%. So just keep that in mind. It, this is a really good preventative measure uh, and moment, even if their life is low, if their life is already below 50%, boom, easy, free 800, well, not free, 800 point cure. Then Aether Pack, this is going to have that fairy focus in on uh, one target, healing them continuously. It's going to cost, uh, it's basically going to drain your fairy gauge uh, 10 points each. And so it's good, but it does last a long time and it shouldn't be forgotten. Insuna is going to remove a single detrimental effect from a target, same place as it is on White Mage. Dispossession uh, is basically says, get out of here, fairy, you're done. Uh, but it's going to give you a full stack of Aether Flow. So if for some reason you're like, you burned all, you know, all your stacks, you still got 45 seconds till Aether Flows back up. You do need that Lust Rate. In this case, I don't think I covered it. Is that 600 potency cure, insta-cast. It's fantastic, but it does cost one Aether Flow. It does increase your Fairy Gauge. So note that by doing these, you fill filling up your Fairy Gauge, and then you can drain your Fairy Gauge. It's kind of a little bit of ebb and flow for it. Anyway, back to dispensation. This allows you to basically say goodbye, get out of your Fairy. I want you to, <laughs> I want those Aether Flow stacks. And then while you're under this effect, you can't call your fairy back out, but you will be able to after a little bit. It does have a recast of 180, and personally, it's not my favorite ability, but it is important in those oh no moments that you can help probably save the party. I have an X Ether here, which is great because then I can just restore MP if I need to, and I have Swift Cast listed right here. Now, under my, let me just jump into uh, Hotbar 2. Uh, I've got Ruin 2. This allows me on the move to be able to easily insta cast and Swift Target. Uh, anybody. A uh, Ruin 2 isn't <laughs> upgraded, it's just its own ability, its own spell from the Ruin uh, series of abilities themselves. But so don't confuse it with Ruin because of, you know, Ruin becomes <laughs> uh, Broil. Swift Cast, easy access here, obviously if I need to resurrect. Rescue, that's where that's that's put and, and hidden right there. Then I can have my Summon Selene or Summon Eos, it's my very choice. Uh, essentially that's just how you have it, they do the exact same thing. Nothing, nothing master, uh, masterful there. Then I have my Aether Pack. This is how I would execute that onto a target. And then I have Summon Seraph uh, listed here. So Summon Seraph basically switches out your fairy and it's gonna automatically cast your veil on the party members who suffer damage. Uh, this cannot be summoned unless the pet is already summoned. So you have to have a fairy out in the battlefield to use Summon Seraph. And then this is gonna be kind of the, fa the different abilities your fairy has accordingly. So Embrace is 150 HP cure. Think of a region. You got your fairy, you can place them around. They're going to heal anybody that you need them to heal. Uh, then from here, you got Whispering Dawn. That's 120 uh, cure potency, again, lasting 21 seconds. Illumination is going to increase your healing mountain magic potency of all nearby party members by 10% while reducing magic damage taken by all nearby party members by 5%. And that's going to last for 20 seconds. Now, Fey Union, this gradually restores HP of party members within Fairy as the Fey Union. This is that Aether Pact. The Fairy Gauge is depleted while HP is restored, and Fey Union effects upon executing any other Fairy actions, or and also the party member has to be within 15 yams. So you can turn it on and you can turn it off and go from there. At level 76, you get Fey Blessing. This is going to restore HP to all nearby party members with that 350 potency. It's going to cast that 10 points of Fairy Gauge. 
Now, Seraph Veil is going to restore with a Cure Potency of 200. It's also going to affect a magical barrier around anybody who, uh, which nullifies damage, equaling the amount of HP restored. So let's say, you, just simple math, you cure for 200 points, they're going to have a shield for 200. If you cure for 2,000, it's going to have a 2,000 HP shield on them. Uh, Angler's Whisper, this gradually restores the HP of all nearby party members and with a cure potency of 120. Seraphic Illumination, this is going to increase the healing potency of all nearby party members by 10% while reducing magic damage taken by all party members by 5%. You can kind of see here this uh, goes right with Faye and Seraph in this case. So Whispering Dawn, Angel's Whisper, those are married there. And Consultation is going to restore HP party members by three with a 300 potency, and it's going to wreck that barrier around them, uh, again, equaling the total amount of HP restored. So you have a lot of power, I think, especially with the Fairy, as long as you're managing that okay. Fairy is that constant source or semi-constant source of he uh, healing that's going out and helping keep the party alive while you as a healer can then uh, decide to come in and pop some debuffs on them can pop some uh, damage on them broil three being your pretty much hardest hitting single target attack and then uh, you know art of war being a great aoe uh, target attack as well so we've gone over the skills we've gone over all of the my settings let's go and talk about my macros i want to show off a couple of different macros especially as it relates earlier to white mage uh, just for example if you wanted i don't actually have to <laughs> anymore let's go ahead and get rid of that oh how things have changed in the longest time uh, basically a macro is pretty simple and straightforward and i think i'm getting some requests for people to, for me to do a deep dive macro guide so hit me up in the comments let me know if that's still the case uh ac raise and then in this case i can say uh, to the party hey there's no time to you know rest get up uh get off the ground you can see the command here the t command this is basically saying target so for my astrologian like with gravity for example uh tt means target of my target so if i wanted to keep myself locked on the tank let's say i was struggling let's say i'm learning let's say i'm nervous i can keep my target focused on the tank and then i can set my attack spells to tt and what that would do is that would say target of my target. So whoever the tank is targeting, that's who I'm now targeting. And you can see here with fail through, if my tank doesn't have an appropriate target, it's going to try to target my target. So I can still use these kind of macros on an enemy uh, without having to worry about it trying to target an, an enemy trying to target like, oh, now I'm casting it on my tank. That's not how that, that works. The system is smart enough to know not to hurt your, your your party members but tt is a great example of a, a, an attack spell where it's going to prioritize target of your target versus just general target let's see if i've got any other like macros under physic uh, if you wanted to command your your pet to, to embrace and honestly at this point i'm just showing this i don't know if this actually changed in shadowbringers you can see here i don't use it i haven't bothered with it this entire expansion but for the life of me i just want to show this as an example if you wanted to do a pet command, if you wanted to tell your pet to embrace. And just as an aside, I actually just went to look that up. Pet actions are still, at least as a patch 5.3, still supported and still a part of the glossary and documentation. So I might be a little confused. Either way, this is just a good example. You can try it out for yourself and see if it forces your fairy to heal your target uh, or if you can just you know rely on just using physic. It's really up to you. Uh, this is what I did in the past. I haven't been doing it yet or as part of the Shadowbringers expansion. Uh, so consider this food for thought, and then if it is not true, if it does not allow you to do so, let me know in the comments below, and I can make sure that at least I add that to my information and my brain. Uh, personally speaking, I, I believe this is not working, or whatever, but... Okay, so lastly, I want to show off Sacred Soil. This allows me to place the uh, you know Sacred Soil on the ground. Now, I'm going to set it wherever I'm targeting. So if it's the tank, if it's the boss, this is going to put that uh, around them. Uh, you can, in this case, without the T, it's going to then ask me to place it somewhere. So then I can use the controller uh, holding down the right bumper and the left stick to kind of reposition uh, where I want it to go. So just note that I find it easier just to have that T command, and that just makes my life a whole bunch easier. Feel free to use this as you see fit. And with that, that wraps up this video. Guys, if you have any questions, comments, let me know in the comments below. Hit me up on Discord if you want to have a conversation about Scholar. Personally, I think it's a great choice, especially if you're choosing, choosing, jumping <laughs> into the world of Final Fantasy XIV. I hope you found this interesting, informational, and helpful in some way. If there's anything I can help clarify, you can always check out additional guides using the playlist below or my ultimate controller guide, which is posted over at work to game Anyway, for Ginger Prime, my name is Brian. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you have a fantastic day, and I hope to see you in my next video. But until then, take care.
This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.